there. I hope you're having an amazing day. Carolyn Burgess here, inspirational Catholic speaker, author of Understanding the Jesus Code, creator of the Live Method, and I'm here to help you learn how to live your life healthy, happy, and holy with weekly online videos. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. I'm really glad you're here. If at any point during this video you're enjoying the content and you think, hey, this lady's kind of okay, I'd appreciate it if you click that like button below. And please, I invite you to leave comments in the comment section below so we can engage in some conversation. Also, remember, I have a lot of links below. I always do a lot of great information. Today, I have a link on my COVID wellness tips. I have links on various remedies that can help you, uh, that have been shown to help the immune system during COVID and the immune system in general. So make sure you check that out. And I also have a lot of links to the science and the data that I use to create this video. So before we begin, I just want to thank you for being here and let's just kind of get to it. Hello, Carolyn Burgess here. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I beat COVID-19. Before we move into all that fun stuff, I'll share with you my disclaimer in a nutshell. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a part of the medical profession. Uh, and I'm, I don't diagnose. I don't treat. Please don't take any information in this video as diagnostic or treatment. What I do offer in this video is a lot of information, information that I wish I would have known before I had COVID. Uh, and it's just for you to take and, and you know, use as you as you determine. If you have a if you have disease, please, please visit your medical doctor. All right, so today's topics, we're going to look at symptoms I experience. We're going to look at stages of COVID-19. We're going to look at herd immunity. We're going to look at the immune system. We're going to look at some natural remedies and we're going to look at the steps that I took to get well. So this disease, if there's one thing that you remember from my video, I would like you to re remember that this is a physical, emotional, and spiritual disease. We are attacked in all three areas. Physically, we see that's the symptoms. And uh, so that's pretty obvious. However, emotionally, we really can't see the full extent of the emotional harm that we are experiencing as a result of COVID-19 or as a result of the virus. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus. COVID-19 is the disease. So we are seeing an increase in depression, anxiety, suicide, child abuse, spousal abuse, the financial stress, the financial devastation that people are experiencing. This cannot be undermined. Because when we are under stress, the body is releasing a, a huge cascade of stress hormones. When that happens, the body is sending, it's gone into fight or flight. The body cannot send energy to the immune system or it can't send as much. So we have to look at this emotional component and we have to address it. And most of our, most of all, we are living in the middle of a spiritual battle right now. The devil is showing his hand. He's showing his hand because churches have been, were closed during the lockdown. Churches have been burnt down. Statues of our saints have been desecrated and destroyed. And statues of the Blessed Mother have been desecrated and destroyed. And the devil hates our churches, hates our saints, and he hates the Blessed Mother. So there is no reason that those buildings and those structures should have been destroyed. So, so we know this is a spiritual battle and we have to address it spiritually. And the way we do that is through prayer. We have to pray, we have to surrender to God, and we have to recognize that we are created in the image of God and the image of the Father and the Son and the Holy Trinity immersed in the love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Trinity. So anything that separates us from that is a, is a lie. And we see that we are, the, the masks separate us. The social distancing is, separate, is separating us. There has to be a better way, and I believe there is a better way. And we have to follow God, and we have to, we have to pray and, and follow His will in that. Now, on that note, I have come up with a prayer for our current state. Now, today, it's August 16, 2020. Just wanted to put the date out there. So, a prayer for healing. I invite you to pray this with me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. I give you my will. Please give me your will in return. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Please take me and mold me with your humility and love so that I can be your instrument of healing and peace in our hurting world. I unite any resistance I have to my full surrender to your will with your passion. And I ask you to cover my resistance with your blood so that my resistance only serves to make me a better servant for you. I acknowledge that I came into being through you and in you alone do I live. Help me to more fully glorify you with my life by increasing in me a deep, 
deep yearning to be your instrument. And Father God, thy will be done. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now down below, I have a link to that prayer if you want to print it out and pray it. So the history and symptoms. And before I dive into the history and symptoms, I want to share with you that before I was exposed to the virus, I was not afraid of the virus. I thought, well, if I come in contact with it, I'll probably get a little sick and then my immune system is going to work. I'm going to support it naturally and so be it. Then I'll have natural immunity. So I was not afraid of the virus and I thought, Worst case, let's say it attacks me so hard that I die. I'm not afraid of dying. You know, remember, if we cling to this life, we will lose it. And if we surrender our life to God, then we will gain it. I, it, whenever God wants to take me from this earth, He's going to take me. And then I just can only hope and pray that He's going to use me in another capacity to, to for for His will. And so I was not afraid of the virus uh, at all. And so that's that's that. So it started anyway on a Thursday evening. I had a little bit of a sore throat and I was tired and I thought, oh, what's going on? Sometimes I'll get a sore throat. I can have a little fatigue and it's allergy season. So I thought, is this allergies? Probably because that's kind of how I feel when allergies are starting. However, it wasn't allergies. In the middle of the night, that Thursday night, of, you know, fr early Friday morning, I developed a fever. I developed the worst headache I've ever had in my life. Uh, I was supposed to have uh, surgery on my ankle that morning to have some hardware taken out. I broke it last summer. So that m Monday that, of, that, of that week, I'd had a negative COVID test. So I know I came down with, I was exposed. And then I came, and then the, at some point, I think Tuesdays when I was exposed. And then Friday, well, Thursday evening, Friday, the symptoms hit. So anyway, that's how it started. Um, I had fatigue. It was uh, 16 days. This lasted. I had fatigue, fever, uh, a headache. Uh, I also had this like really weird progression. I would start to feel like I would start to feel a little better, and then I'd have I'd eat. Now I was eating still pretty healthy. And I would eat, and the next day it was like, bam, you know, back to ground zero. Now, mind you, I also had you know, nausea throughout this whole thing, so I wasn't eating. I would just you know, drink. I made sure I drank water, and that was a challenge. Uh, so what I realized is like, hey, I can't handle food yet, even healthy food. I had to address this like I was coming off of fast. So then when I started to feel a little bit better and I could eat, then I started doing bone broths. I did eat berries. I, my body was craving berries, probably the vitamin C in there. And I started drinking these really good uh, green drinks. And I have links below to, to all that stuff, to the green one, not to the berries. You have to get that in your store. But I have links to the bone broth that I used and the green drinks that I had. And I also started doing uh, Epsom salt baths because I would have, I was starting to get Charlie horses, some tightness. So I know my body needed some extra magnesium. And those are some of the things that really helped me to gradually you know, continue to get better. I also had like really fuzzy thinking, which was uh, frustrating and a little scary to me because I kind of, I like my brain. I like to read. I like to study. I'm kind of an egghead on that note um, and I find a lot of joy there and uh, fortunately it came back but I would I read something and I couldn't even read one sentence or I, or I would try to work and I couldn't like, string a coherent thought together so that was kind of a little scary and then pe breathing people would ask me like hey how was your breathing Breathing was really pretty good. There were a couple days where I could, I, breathing felt a little labored, but breathing was never a big concern. So there are my symptoms. So let's kind of look at the stages of COVID-19. Now we have asymptomatic folks, and there's a range, I'm gonna share with you some stats on that, but that's where these numbers come from, this 6.3 to 96%. Uh, then we have mild, which is where I fell. Now I pretty much had all of the symptoms in the mild. I don't know about clotting. I didn't have any, you know, any symptoms of clots, but my blood probably did get a little thicker. I was aware of that. I'm um, blood type A, so blood type A's we tend to have a little more cardiovascular concern. Uh, however, I I didn't have uh, I didn't have a loss of taste or smell, which is nice. Uh, but I did have pretty much all the other symptoms that are listed there in mild. And then uh, the next step from mild to serious, the big change is there a need for is there's an uh, increased need for oxygen. So we know something is going on in the lungs, possibly like that cytokine storm, which we're going to talk about that. Uh, 14 percent of people that test positive 
fall into this category. The next step is uh, critical, and that's the need for ventilation. And there's a new stage called the long haulers. Now, long haulers are someone that had COVID and they recover from COVID and they test negative for COVID. However, they have all these symptoms. The big, the main symptom is fatigue. And I have a link below that to, the IU School of Medicine is doing a study on the long haulers. And in that study, there's a long list of the symptoms. The number one symptom is fatigue. So I'm looking at that and I've got several clients who are, are who are long haulers. I'm trying to help them through that. Uh, actually doing pretty well, which is a huge blessing. Praise God. So the long haulers with that fatigue as a naturopath, we have to, I'm looking at, you know, so if there's fatigue, where's the, why is there fatigue and what's the body trying to do with its energy? Because we have like, you know, let's say this is the amount of energy we have available. So if there's fatigue, it means like the energy is being gobbled up for something because we have this much left where we'd really like to have this much to experience life. So when we when I, when I look at that, I'm like, what's the body trying to do? Is the immune system battling something? And it's quite often the issue. It's kind of a, uh, a constant constant warfare under the surface. Uh, is, is the body trying to detox? Because that can require a lot of energy too. And I believe once we get sick, you know, when we're sick, when we have a virus, like something cold or flu or something like that, one of the things the body does, it goes through like a spring cleaning. It will start to detox and clean up. So that's one of the benefits that I experienced from COVID. And so that was kind of cool. But anyways, with the long haulers, we had to look at what's possibly going on. And also we had to look at their lifestyle factors. Has there been a lot of stress in their life? And most importantly, like on the stress note, did they grow up in a stressful situation? Is their subconscious mind programmed to, to respond to a situation with stress? Do they, is there constant triggers there that they're not aware of? So lots of things to look at with the long haulers. Uh, there's um, one particular nutrient that's showing some promising, some promise for the long haulers, and we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but it's inocysteine, um, and uh, it's actually kind of got some um, exciting stuff. So let's look at these, some stats here. Now, if you can recall the diamond princess, that was the cruise ship. Uh, and now they tested 3,711 people. And of those individuals, 46.5% were asymptomatic. And now when I saw that number, and this is before I had COVID, I'm like, 46.5%? Okay, I'm healthier than half of the population, I believe. Uh, I'm, But I'm 57, so I thought, okay, well, I had to account for that a little bit. But I thought, well, I probably won't get hit too hard. I didn't think I'd be asymptomatic. I didn't think I'd get hit as hard as I did, and I have some ideas why, and I'm gonna share those with you. But anyway, the Diamond Princess, 46% of the individuals that were tested were asymptomatic, so that's a pretty big number. Um, inmates in several states were tested, then that number is almost 4,700 individuals, and 96% were asymptomatic. And then we have the Tyson Foods, uh, a little over 3,700 individuals were tested and 94.6% were, were asymptomatic. And then we have the Washington, the, the um, King County uh, Nursing Facility in Washington. Now they tested 76 individuals there and 6.3% were asymptomatic. And I think even that number it's pretty amazing because we're talking about people who are in the nursing facility, probably a lot of comorbidities, a lot of disease, and still, you know, it's, it's a small number, but I think it's significant. So, and then we also have San Francisco residents. They looked at a large population there of over 3,700 individuals. 52.7% were asymptomatic. So what we're seeing is a lot of asymptomatic folks, and it doesn't, uh, there's something going on. So I think, uh, now, especially I've, I've just done so much research and a deep dive into COVID, the immune system in some individuals is better programmed to deal with this virus. And this is a new virus. So there's um, promise. There's promise out there. So let's look at herd immunity. So herd immunity is, I will pull this up here, R naught over R naught. R naught R not minus one over R naught. So what is R naught? R naught is the number of people that one person will infect. So let's say R naught is two. So this guy, say this is the original person who had who had COVID, and we know this came from China. So this is a person from China, probably in a lab, but could possibly have been from one of the markets there. So let's say this person infects 
two people, so R0 is two, they each infect two people and so forth. So what we're assuming here in this little um, diagram is that none of these people have a uh, prior immunity and because they're passing it on. But however, let's say this person, this little guy right here, already had immunity because he was already exposed. Then, then uh, those two individuals cannot catch the virus because it wasn't passed on then these four and let's say one of these guys over here also doesn't have he had immunity and then so what what happens is as more people have immunity less people become infected uh, so eventually we're going to reach herd immunity this you know, because we have immunity so the cat's out of the bag with this virus it's rather contagious it's actually it's pretty contagious so we have to reach herd immunity we're going to either reach herd, herd immunity every single one of us or, or the ones that reach herd immunity are going to reach it the, the way i did naturally or we're going to reach it with a vaccine so i'm not going to have a vaccine conversation here however i think there are ways that we can support our immune system so that it better handles the virus when we come in contact with that either naturally or through a vaccine so let's take a look at uh, uh, this up here so we had 331 million people in the u.s and the cdc has said that possibly 20 million have had the sars cov2 virus now this 20 million dollar figure is probably a little low and I, and I say that because what they did is they looked at people who have tested positive for the virus and people who have antibodies. And then they just took that number and they uh, looked at, they extrapolated it outward into the general population. They came up with 20 million. However, I think that's low because what they did not take into consideration is people that have T cell immunity from uh, uh like T cell memory and B cell memory because that's not that wasn't tested there and we're going to take a look at that like what is B cell memory what is T cell memory uh, and then so let's say R naught is three it's generally accepted in the scientific community that R naught in the United States is either two or three so let's say if R naught is three then 220 million people will have to have immunity one way or another for us to reach herd immunity if R naught is two then 165 million people have to have immunity for us to reach herd immunity. If R0 is 1.5, there are some studies that suggest that that is, that is the number, then 110 million. Uh, there's another study, it's kind of small, or another thought that's kind of uh, not well accepted, but it is accepted in some circles, and it's a possibility that when 20% of the population uh, has had immunity, then that's we need 66 million people. Either way, these are big numbers uh, that we have to reach before we can reach herd immunity. So what I what I'm share, going to share with you here is I, you know, well, first we're going to have a little talk how the immune system works, but then some natural remedies so that when and if you become exposed, and I say if because there's a small number of people that won't become exposed. So let's say R naught is three. Well, then. 220 million people about 67 percent of the population have to have immunity so not all 331 million people have to have immunity so my thought is let's support our immune systems so our immune systems are better capable of fending off this virus so that those who are most vulnerable those who are most vulnerable physically emotionally and spiritually so we have to protect people and i think the way we can protect them is by making the lifestyle choices to support ourselves so that we can support we can support others because this virus it's it's not going away all right so your immune system is sars cov2 let's take a look like over here these these guys are here these these are like little pac-man this is like bad bad virus right here this is a bad coronavirus sars cov2 we don't like it so anyway so the uh and well before i move forward i want to share with you uh dr bean on uh, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures uh, YouTube channel, and I have the link to his uh, his YouTube channel below. I learned a lot of information from watching his videos. He's brilliant. And he's just he's kind of fun and funny too. So I really liked him. His heart his heart is is good. So if you want to learn more, you want to take a deeper dive into this, please check out check out Dr. Bean's work. Uh, so let's pretend this little guy right here is a macrophage and uh, he's doing his best he's doing his best and he's killing this virus now we have macrophages um, in this innate arm of your immune system there's macrophages killer T cells dendritic cells neutrophils and eosinophils so your innate arm think of your innate arm is like the first defense so your first defenders they're out there and they're gonna get this virus and knock it off all right so 
if your innate arm can't like can't deal with the virus effectively then your adaptive arm has to uh, become engaged now your adaptive arm can take seven to ten days before it mounts a defense and this is uh and this is why some folks they're exposed to the virus they don't have the capacity the innate arm that doesn't have the capacity to fight the virus off the body has to rely on the adaptive arm in the seven to ten day window seven to ten days that's a lot of time for this bad little virus to overtake the body and then we can move into a possible cytokine storm so let's look at the adaptive arm here so the first thing uh, the, the, the first approach and the, pre the preferable approach is the body moves into create T cells and then B cells and the B cells then create antibodies or the body can create T cells and a possible cytokine storm. So what's the difference between those two? Now the top, the, the top preferable, preferable choice is more is anti-inflammatory and we're gonna look at that in the next slide and the other pathway it's more inflammation so let's look at um, long-term immunity so B cells now B cells they hang out in your spleen and your lymphatic system now the, these memory B cells they can last a long time folks that uh, so there's some folks that survived the, 19, the 1918 flu and they had memory B cells 80 years later so memory B cells can last a long time and we, we just don't know certainly with this current SARS-CoV virus we don't know how long this virus can last all we know is that memory B cells can last a long time as I mentioned these memory B cells they hang out in your spleen and your lymphatic system now your lymph it's throughout your whole system it's kind of like a drainage system and we want to make sure that we're eating foods that support a nice clear healthy lymph it's kind of so that immune system can do a battle and then when immune system opponents when they you know kill viruses and pathogens that the body can easily move them out now in my opinion one of the worst foods that you can eat that will congest your lymph is is saturated fat and uh, it's the trans saturated fats the hydrogenated saturated fats not the man-made saturated but these hydrogenated uh, and it's, you can look on a label it will say hydrogenated vegetable oil just because it's vegetable doesn't mean it's good but hydrogenated vegetable oil either fully or partially trans fats and what those fats do they get in the body and they have what's called a 57 day half-life so it means you eat it today in 57 days it's still there and then and so forth but they will create um, havoc in the uh, in the cell membrane cells will die earlier and then where do they have to go the body has to then move them out uh, we, we do not want to congest our lymph exercise will help the lymph to move uh, like water is really important for the lymph anyway we want to make sure that we have a healthy lymphatic system now also long-term memory long-term immunity we have memory T cells T helper cells and killer T cells now key killer T cells once the body has created this long-term immunity these killer T cells then also are part of your innate arm of your immune system they're over here uh, so your killer T cells once you already your body's already created the blueprint it's like hey the virus comes in your immune system says hey I know you and the killer T cells are automatically engaged because your T your memory T cells are like oh we need to do this your memory T cells tell the help T helper cells hey go go like tell the forces tell them what to do and the T cells and T fighter cells are like I'm on it so that's in a nutshell how the immune system uh, will initially respond your innate and your adaptive so let's take a look a little deeper so we're gonna look at your macrophages here the eating the, they're eating the bad guy and so this is we'll just say this is SARS-CoV-2 bad 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 all right so when that happens the macrophage then says hey I know what you are because it's eating this virus up and breaking it down so then it will communicate with your naive T cell which then will become a T helper cell and in this communication the body says hey I either need to go this way or I need to go this way so this is the anti-inflammatory pathway this is the inflammatory pathway so we want the body to go through the anti-inflammatory pathway the anti-inflammatory pathway I think as a naturopath 
it's going to follow that pathway if the body's less inflamed. And we are eating so many foods like sugar and white flour too that inflame the body. And so the immune system is on a heightened response because if there's an inflammation, the immune system has to deal with the inflammation. However, let's say the body is not inflamed because you're not eating, uh, you're not living in an inflammatory state. So then the body will go this anti-inflammatory route. Uh, the, the T helper two cells are going to tell um, B cells, hey, you know, get to work. And the B cells are going to make some antibodies. Uh, however, if we go down this T helper one pathway, this is when we can possibly have the cytokine storm. Now there's these little substances called interleukins that are in the body and they're released in the body. And uh, during an immune response, they can either be anti-inflammatory or inflammatory. Well, they're always anti-inflammatory or inflammatory. And it depends on our lifestyle and our diet. Now, what we uh, we refer to as your body's terrain. This is basically the environment of your body. So we want to make sure your, your body's terrain is healthy and supportive of the anti-inflammatory pathway. And I do share some of that information in the handout I have below. It's a free handout on, on COVID. So let's look at the antibodies. So in MERS-CoV-2, so in MERS-CoV-2, this is also also a, a, a coronavirus. Uh, so is the Middle Eastern Respiratory uh, uh, Coronavirus. Now we saw, and what when science has seen is that the antibodies in MERS-CoV-2, they last like two to three years. So that's a long time. Um, and that's pretty exciting, pretty promising. And this is how viruses die out because we create antibodies or we create T cells and, and B cells. And once we're exposed, uh, our body then fights it and then we don't have the disease we don't pass it on and then then the, that particular virus will die out okay so SARS-CoV-2 there, there's talk saying that those antibodies only last two to three months I kind of question that but we haven't had enough time to know how this virus is responding now the the antibodies will help to clear the virus from our body fluids and then they can prevent infection so it's really important to be able to uh, create antibodies so this SARS-CoV-1 virus. This was 2002-2003. SARS-CoV-1. It was the first um, SARS-CoV virus. SARS-CoV-2 is now the second. MERS was another coronavirus, but it, they're just they're all coronaviruses. Even the common cold is a coronavirus. So it's SARS-CoV-1, which was in 2002-2003. It's about 17 years ago. They found that folks that had SARS-CoV-1 mounted a T cell response, mounted an, an antibody response, mounted, mounted an immune response, they had, they had immunity to SARS-CoV-2. And I think that helps to explain the, uh, the asymptomatic folks, because for some reason, some individuals have immunity. Now, it could be from SARS-CoV-1, although not a lot of people had that, but what other coronaviruses are out there that are helping to support immunity? Even the common cold's a, a coronavirus, although we don't think that that provides immunity, but folks with the common cold, they can show positive for SARS-CoV-2 because it's all the coronavirus. So anyway, just food for thought and things I've, I've been um, mulling over and like what's what's going on. Then we also, we also obviously have to address and, and take a look at genetic factors, stress, lifestyle, and what's been going on with individuals. All right, so now let's look at some fun things. Let's look at some uh, nutrition. Now, I'm gonna say this is the innate arm and get my little highlighter here. This is your innate arm and your adaptive arm of your immune system. Remember your innate arm, first defenders and then your adaptive arm kicks in seven to ten days later now when your macrophage macrophage will eat this little like bad 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 virus and then communicates with your naive t cell which then becomes a helper cell when we have good levels of vitamin d we're going to go through the t helper 2 pathway which is anti-inflammatory which is where we make antibodies and we don't have to have this cytokine storm so it's really really exciting so a little vitamin d uh, or if we're low in vitamin d we see that the body is going to tend to go down this t helper 1 pathway and i do have studies down below if you if you're like a geek and you want to check some of this stuff out then please read some of the studies i have below it's really exciting and there's not even a lot of studies yet because it's so early now, um, vitamin D also affects the epithelial cells. So what are epithelial cells? Well, epithelial cells, they kind of line our body. They line the outside and the inside of us. So this is, uh, let's say this is inside your circulatory system. Uh, there's a little cholesterol there. 
Uh, so right here is where the epithelial cells are. Now we see in the severe cases that there is a lot of immune system activity here, and that can that can encourage platelet clotting. Now in the in the lungs we have inside your alveoli, inside there we have epithelial cells, and in the more advanced cases, especially the critical cases, we see a lot of immune system activity there, and this is where we're seeing folks with this cytokine storm. So I, I you know, to me this is really exciting exciting and we have like a nutrient and it's been studied and it's vitamin D so I think there's a you know a lot of reason to take a look at it. am I do I have enough vitamin D do I not have a vitamin D and then your dendritic cells which are part of your uh, part of your innate arm they need vitamin D and there's also this study a French study and they looked at all kinds of things and in a nutshell what they they came to the conclusion that everyone in France should be on vitamin D. So they live in the northern, uh, anyone really north of Atlanta, we're not getting enough sunshine. And so I think we benefit from vitamin D. Again, I'm not diagnosing, I'm not treating. Please don't take any of this information I'm sharing with you that way, because that would be like, that would be really sad. And I don't want them to take my video down. So, um, so I want to be able to help, you know, be able to help. Anyway, uh, so moving on. So let's look at natural remedies in vitamin D. Like what is going on here? So first we have UV rays. This is your UV rays. This is your skin. So the UV rays come in. Uh, they work. They combine with cholesterol, and D3 is made. Vitamin D3. Now D3 is the inactive form. So D3 then will go in. So we have. UV rays come in, they react on your skin. Uh, cholesterol then takes this UV, UV ray and cholesterol is combined and we have vitamin D3. D3 is inactive, it's kind of like if you have a sporting team, you have the players on the bench and then you have the players like in the game. D3 has to be worked on a little bit before it can go in the game. So D3 becomes active and uh, it will move through your liver and your kidneys is activated. But also, hey, this is really cool. D3 is activated into its active form in various immune system cells during an infection. So your body has like plan B uh, and it's these lower macrophages and other immune system cells. They will make D3. Okay, so let's back up here. Uh, what happens with melanin in the skin. The more melanin we have in our skin, the more we block these UV rays. So let's take a look at that. It, vitamin D and skin color. And here's some kind of some scary stats. Now 42% of the population is found to be deficient in vitamin D. 42%, big number. However, 82% of black people are deficient in vitamin D. 80, like let that sink in for a moment. 82% are deficient and 70% are deficient of, of the Hispanics are deficient in vitamin D. So like, why is that? What's going on? So my skin color is the color it is because way back in the day, you know, human beings have been walking the earth like 200,000 years, long time. But way back in the day, my ancestors who were either like the Middle East and Northern Africa, that's where humanity started. My ancestors moved north and some moved to what is now Sweden and others moved to what is now England and Ireland, all places that don't have a lot of sunshine and a kind of gray. Uh, now my ancestors, they were outside a lot. They weren't inside. Like we are inside a lot and that's why I have up here UV rays 15 minutes a day of full exposure between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. so it's like in your in your swimsuit as much as you can however you know it's cold here I live in Indiana in a suburb of Indianapolis it's cold here in the winter I'm not going outside then uh, anyway I digress so if so my ancestors who were dark-skinned, they moved to these cold climates that don't have a lot of sun, and vitamin D is so important for our health and uh, so important for like our survival that their skin color had to change and able to be able to take in more UV rays so that the UV rays would convert with the cholesterol and about 80% or so of the cholesterol in our body, our body made it, our body's making cholesterol. So that UVAs, UV rays would react with the cholesterol and make D3. So what happens when we have more melanin? the UV rays can't come in. We have less UV rays because the melanin blocks. So why, why would that be? Well, 
when you have darker skin, you're in more intense sun. You don't want an overabundance of vitamin D3 because too much D3 isn't good. And, and it was, we call it a vitamin, but it's really, it's really a hormone. So anyway, the body, like the human body, God is so amazing. Like he, he created our bodies and then we migrated and we need more vitamin D3. And so then our skin just starts to change its color so it can absorb more it can absorb more of the UV rays. However, nowadays we're inside, so we're not absorbing a lot of these UV rays. And this is really harmful to the folks that have more melanin because they can't make their vitamin D3. All right. So hope that's all clear. So now let's go back down to the little macrophage guy. So he makes some really important things, calicidins, beta defensines, and nuclear factor kappa B. Now, our, our calcinins, they will increase your immune response, which is really good, increase blood flow and lymphatic flow to the site, wherever the infection is, uh, increases uh, phagocytosis, that's like where our little macrophage is like eating, eating this bad, bad virus. Uh, and then uh, a lot of the, the macrophages, they will live in our upper respiratory system and they need some vitamin D to like multiply and do their job so vitamin d really helps there uh so that and then uh they will bring like blood and nutrition to the area and they help they help the calcidians they will help b cells and t cells to proliferate however we need vitamin d to make calcidians and then the beta defensines these guys are super cool uh what they do is they will punch holes in the surface of the cell membrane of the bad bad virus and i have over here that the sars cov2 virus it's an enveloped virus which means it has a membrane not all viruses have a membrane but with enough vitamin d we can have the beta defensines and punch holes in the virus membrane and what happens then is the virus dies so lots of reasons to incorporate vitamin d into your life do i take vitamin d now yes i do did i take it before well I took a cod liver oil that had nat from standard process, which is a great cod liver oil, and it has uh, naturally occurring vitamin D because cod liver oil has it. However, I now believe I didn't have enough vitamin D. I'm I'm not outside that much. Uh, I just I'm not, not out in the sun that much, and more so now in the summer. But I'm not, and so I now I take vitamin D. Uh, I do a sublingual spray. It makes it a little easier for the body to absorb. It's a product from a standard process from the companies I carry. All right, so let's look at zinc, quercetin, and EGCG, like really important players in the immune system, especially in light of this particular virus. So um, zinc, zinc does all kinds of good things. We've probably heard about zinc. Zinc is really, it helps balance your hormones. However, uh, there is a really important zinc-copper ratio that we have to uh, keep in mind, uh, and too much zinc will throw that out of balance. Uh, progesterone tends to follow zinc estrogen tends to follow copper so we do have to keep in mind there i do a zinc taste test in my office it's a something i get from standard process and uh it's a liquid it's a liquid zinc and uh, if you taste if it kind of tastes a little watery probably low in you probably low in zinc if you can, it has a strong taste and you probably have enough zinc because your body doesn't need it anymore all right so zinc is used um, in wound healing the immune system uses it uh it, it's 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 used in uh they uh, the protection of of it prevention of a virus so we're going to i have this little diagram over here so this is uh this is a, a cell of ours that the virus got in so it's like a really sad cell it's like oh my gosh i'm being attacked by a virus and it's going to kill me however we have zinc on the outside if we can get zinc on the inside zinc will stop this virus from proliferating which is a really good thing uh, so how do we do that we need a zinc ionophore a zinc ionophore will bring this zinc inside the virus and then the zinc will stop that virus from proliferating so zinc is super important when we're dealing with a virus and this SARS-CoV-2 it, it's a pretty nasty virus all right so let's look at some zinc ionophores egcg is from green tea extract that is um, that's a zinc ionophore now it's possibly uh, more powerful than quercetin uh and that's a it was a small kind of look at the two uh so i think it's i think it's smart to take take both right now so egcg is neuroprotective it comes in green tea it's anti-inflammatory also blood pressure cholesterol like brain health like can help reduce cytokines 
Uh, this nutrient does wonderful things in the body. Quercetin, another zinc ionophore, which will help again transport zinc into the cell. Uh, obesity, blood sugar issues, LDL oxidation, uh, and we and LDL that's the bad cholesterol. So we want to do what we can to support the body there. Really important. Uh, of course, the brain health, uh, seasonal allergies. Quercetin is really good there. It helps uh, with uh, kind of calm down these cinephils. Uh, so anyway, quercetin and EGCG they both support the body, and there's some crossover but these support the body a little different so do i take zinc now yes i do did i take it before no i did not sadly uh do i take egcg now yes i do did i take it before no and you can guess again quercetin do i take it now yes did i take it before no so i think one of the reasons i got hit as hard as i did is even though i felt my immune system was pretty strong i wasn't taking some of the key nutrients that the body likes to fight this particular virus so it's the, you know, I'm making this video because there's like information and wisdom that I've gained not only studying uh, this particular virus and COVID, but I, I learned from my almost 20 years of being a naturopath. So I thought, I got to get this out to the general public. So then you just have this information. Again, I'm not diagnosing, I'm not treating. Please don't take it that way. All right, so vitamin C and N-L-cysteine two other really important nutrients in this battle of, of SARS-CoV-2. So potential benefits of vitamin C. So vitamin C is pretty cool. It will uh, recharge quercetin, vitamin E, like other antioxidants. It like sacrifices itself so that others can live. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it helps you know, mediate and balance out the immune system, your T cells and your macrophages. Uh, now I want to share with you over here. This is, uh, it neutralizes reactive oxygen species. So what is that? ROS. So this is, uh, this is a, an outer shell, an electron shell, and this is a little electron, and it's unbalanced, and so it's, it can be, it's going to be kind of wobbly because this electron is just like zooming around in this outer shell, boom, 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 but then it can be, uh, it, it will be out of balance, a little wobbly, so it wants another electron, so it can take this electron and pull it over there. Uh, however, when that happens, let's say this is just like a neighboring cell, or or it's part of uh, part of the same cell. That's a pretty it's a pretty violent takeover, and it will create then a chain reaction. Now this outer shell, electron shell, only has one electron, and it's wobbly, and then so forth it goes, and and then what we have is a very unstable system. Now in an immune system response. Um, this ROS, reactive oxygen species, this is there's a lot of this going on. So one of the things that, that vitamin C does, it will sacrifice its electrons so that then this quercetin molecule can be recharged or vitamin E molecule can be recharged. So it becomes balanced. So that's one of the ways that vitamin C helps to support the immune system is its sacrificing of electrons. Now, I have a couple of vitamin C products I really like. Cataplex C from Standard Process. Camo Camo C is another one that I'm a huge fan of. Now, I, so these these two particular products you have to get from a practitioner. I have links below to Standard Process and Physica. You can reach out to them. They'll find a practitioner in your area. So uh, if you're a patient of mine, of course, you can get those from me. But there's a lot of uh, practitioners around the United States uh, that carry these products. If you're not in the United States, you just have to find really good products in your in uh, in the country that you live in or you know and of course diet we've got to eat anti-inflammatory foods really really important so anyway camo camo seeds from the um the camo plant and the berries the really high really high in vitamin c one of the things that this particular product does it's in a liposome delivery system so in that liposomal delivery it passes through the stomach and makes its way to the small intestine. So why is that important? All right, so we have in our in our digestive tract a lot of a lot of um, microbes living there. It's, it's we call it our microbiome. Now we have newer science tells us we have the human body at thirty to forty trillion cells. 30 to 40 trillion cells that carry our DNA. So right here, 30 to 40 trillion cells that say, hey, I'm Carolyn Burgess. However, we have about 40 trillion microbes. 
So we have either the same amount there about or more microbes than we have our own cells. And some of them will hurt us, some will support our life. And it depends, and this goes back to our body's train. What is the environment of our body? So we want to support a healthy microbiome because healthy microbes will support our immune system. And this goes back to like the condition, the train of your body. So when we have a lot of healthy microbes, the immune system is supported, it's, it's anti-inflammatory, and we're going to make more antibodies and so forth instead of going to that cytokine storm. So, wh so why the, the, this immune pyrus patches? Pyrus patches, this is lymphoid lymphatic tissue in the small intestine now most of the bacteria that we have these 40 trillion microbes most of them live in our digestive tract and we have other places too but most are in our digestive tract and a lot are going to be found in our small intestine so they get in our body and these pyre patches will kind of like suck in microbes and do battle and they'll kill the microbes that are bad for us or parasites, whatever. So we want to support the pyrus patches. Now, one of the things I noticed that sore throat, remember I shared with you my, my first symptom was a sore throat. So the, that sore throat started, and then it was also kind of what lasted, and I had a cough, um, I, I had kind of a bad bad cough too, and the cough persisted a little bit. And uh, so I would get up in the morning, this is when I was recovered, but I was still kind of a little like quasi, uh. so I would get up in the morning and I would put Camo Camo C in my green drink. And then uh, I felt good until about like two or three, and then I kind of feel like, oh, I'm fading a little bit, getting a little tired, and it was the sore throat that would come back a little bit. That's like my telltale sign. Uh, and then what I, what I realized a few days into that, I thought, I'm low in vitamin C. And so then what I did, because one, one teaspoon of the Camo Camo C is 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C. So now I take 3,000 milligrams a day, and I'm fine. That, like, that, that kicked it. And I've realized, okay, I just need vitamin C to fight this particular virus right now that you may or may not. Anyway, I like the Camo Camo C because it gets a small intestine and it's double duty. We have vitamin C and then we also have support for the immune system tissue, the pyrus patches in the small intestine. And we want to support pyrus patches during any virus exposure. All right, so N-L-cysteine. N-L-cysteine is really exciting, and there's some new uh, research on N-L-cysteine in the long haulers, which is very promising. Now, N-L-cysteine, uh, it's a precursor to glutathione. Glutathione is a very potent, uh, basically, antioxidant in the liver. Uh, N-L-cysteine is good for a lot of liver detox, moving out of toxins. One of the exciting things I mean, N-L-cysteine is great for a lot, and I have a list in here, elevated lipoproteins and uh, heavy metal detox. One of the exciting things when I'm looking at N-L-cysteine that I'm seeing now with the long haulers is it helps with blood clotting. And blood clotting, that's the result of a like, clumping of your platelets, which we, we see in COVID. So um, N-L-cysteine is an, a remedy that now I'm recommending to my long to my long haulers. Now, do I take N-L-cysteine? I, I don't take N-L-cysteine. Uh, I, I just don't feel that I need that. I'm not a long hauler, um, and I don't feel that my body really needs that right now. Did I take vitamin C? Yes, of course, I'm taking that, the Camo Camo C. Did I take vitamin C by itself before um, my exposure to SARS-CoV-2? No. One of the things I wish I would have taken, so I wish I would have taken zinc, um, EGCG, quercetin, and vitamin C. And now I'm taking those, and those are like my three biggies. Oh, and vitamin D. Yeah, I wasn't taking vitamin D by itself. Those are the three biggies that I think if uh, you want to take some nutrients, those those would be it. All right, so let's look at the natural remedies and dosages. Again, I'm not treating my, I'm not diagnosing. Please don't take any of this information in this in this video as that. So vitamin D3, I, we need a little K with it. It helps with the absorption and the usage of it. Now, vitamin D, it's a good idea to have a blood test because if you're taking D, you don't know where you are and too much D is not good. However, it would be really hard to get too much vitamin D, but it can happen. So I think it's good to get a blood test to see where you are. I think a healthy range for vitamin D in the blood would be 60 to 90 nanograms per milliliter in your blood. Uh, if you're low, then 2,000 to 6,000 I use a day for about three to six months should be good to raise your levels. Um, again, talk with your uh, either your medical doctor or a, a, a natural practitioner in your area to help them guide you through this. These are just kind of general recommendations. I do have these again in my handout below, so make sure you uh, you know click on that, print it out. Yeah, I'm not making you subscribe to my e-newsletter. No tricks there. It's just you click on it, 
there's the handout because I just so want to get the information out. And if you want to subscribe to my e-newsletter, that's fine. That'd be great. But you don't you don't have to to have any of this information. All right. So zinc, uh, if you're low, uh, 200 uh, 220 milligrams five times five times a day for uh, well, uh, for about five days, not five times a day. 220 milligram milligrams for five days should be good. And then you can lower it to 150 milligrams a day. There again, I do a zinc taste test in my office to determine if you need some zinc. Most people do. Uh, we just had to make sure that it, what you have a zinc ionophore to get it in your cells because once zinc is in there it will help uh, however we need to get it in we need to get it in your cells green tea extract which is EGCG uh, 400 to 800 milligrams a day is normally pretty good uh, and there and I'm taking all of these now wasn't before except for the anal cysting at the bottom uh, quercetin 500 to a thousand milligrams a day when I was uh, recovering from COVID when I was like in the, in the middle of COVID. Now, when I came down with this at first, especially the first three days, I was just, I was sicker than a dog. I felt horrible. I couldn't do anything. And then as I started to gradually increase, that's when I started doing some research and some study on this disease. And then I got on quercetin. That was the first nutrient I got. And then I got on uh, green tea extract. Now the quercetin, I, I went on uh, 1500 milligrams a day right away because I just knew I was low and now I take 500 milligrams a day um, the camel camo C one teaspoon a day is normally pretty good that's a thousand milligrams uh, um, other vitamin C you know 2,000 milligrams a day other vitamin C doesn't last in your body a long time it's water soluble so if you know you're actively fighting a virus you might want to play with that increase that a little bit like I said I'm doing I'm doing 3,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C through the camel camel uh, and then in assisting that's about 600 milligrams twice a day I have some pictures and remedies here various remedies some of these are uh, I have links down below others I don't have links because you have to get them from a practitioner uh, some physica you have to get those from physica well, from the practitioner that carries physical but I have the link to physical below so you can reach out to them say hey who's a practitioner in my area and they'll they'll connect you with someone standard process the same thing although there are some standard process products that you can get online I have links to those and then also I have the link to standard process if you want to get them from a practitioner you probably get a better price through a practitioner but anyway those links are below I also have links to other products I like pure encapsulations is a really good company and they have great products so I have several links below to that uh, and then we'll look at additional support that I did so here's some additional remedies bronch effect is from medi herb that's uh, an Australian company an Australian herbal company uh, Kerry bone is the uh, the president of medi herb he's a world-renowned herbalist they have great herbs I love medi herb products now medi herb is distributed through standard process you can't get those online however I uh, I have that link to standard process so you can find a practitioner in your area standard process is they're like 95 years old tons of practitioners all over in the United States um, if you're not in the United States you just have to find good products where you are uh, Conjuplex I do have a link below for uh, Conjuplex the Conjuplex is you can think Conjuplex congestion uh, I use it as a multi to help clear congestion and to help the lymph to flow and kind of break up mucus uh, flu milieu is a homeopathic that I use it's a drainer it just helps the body to drain the body has to drain um, kind of your lymph has to drain it's really important for your whole system to be able to drain so we can move the uh, move the virus out flu milieu it, it really I could feel a lot more clarity in my head and just my body felt like clearer cleaner when I started taking that a uh, prosymbiotic I have a link below to prosymbiotic now prosymbiotic is a lot of good bacteria and that will help to support a healthy microbiome so that's a really important remedy to take for most people ongoing or intermittent sometimes you can take it for a while and then uh, go back on it magnesium lactate I shared with you I had a lot of muscle pain uh, I have a link to that below and then the last product here is sore throat spray which I have on my <laughs> I have it on my desk right now I love sore throat spray because I I tend to get this little scratchy thing in my throat when I was when I was little I had my tonsils taken out so it's kind of been a lifelong thing for me all right so here are some of the other things I'd mentioned that I did you know I would crave berries probably vitamin C I don't have a link for berries below but you can get those at the store now I was also craving grapefruit juice again probably because the vitamin C I do have a link below if you know it's hard for you to get to the store um, Epsom salt baths I have a link for this too uh, that was really important for my muscle pain uh, now when I did the Epsom salt bath I just let the water get as warm as was comfortable I wasn't 
trying to use it as a detox where if I was trying to use it for a detox, I'd let the water get a little warmer or kind of hot. I didn't do that. I just wanted to be comfortable. My body was already uncomfortable enough. But I felt better and I slept better and I did Epsom salt baths. Um, this is the bone broth that I use. Now this particular bone broth, it is a little pricey, but it's really good. And if you're trying to recover, you want to give your body what it needs and you're probably not eating much um, at least that was my experience I couldn't eat much with bone broth when I started doing that I started feeling better um, this simplicity it uh, it's called green blessing uh, it's got apples and it's it's juice cold pressed uh, it is here in Indianapolis they ship it they ship it all over and I do have a link below but now apples are high in quercetin and the other greens in there I just it was super easy for me to like to take that in and digest it and remember I was I was nauseous. I was having like GI stuff. I wasn't feeling real good. I would have that in the morning, and then I started adding my Camo Camo C to it, and to give it that extra like extra little pump push there. And so anyway, that's just some things that I did. Uh, uh, additional support. And uh, no, we're called you know as I mentioned this this disease. It's, it's it's a physical, emotional, and spiritual disease, and we have to address it. We have to address it as the as such. So, you know, we are called to practice the two greatest virtues, and that is humility and love. And when we can practice humility and love, we're addressing things at the spiritual level. So I found this really beautiful psalm that I think is very, very fitting for us right now. And I'm just, just going to read it here. Uh, so bless the Lord, my soul, and do not forget all his gifts. See, God has so many gifts. He just wants to give them to us. He loves us so much. He's just ready to give them to us. But he, we have to, it's like those of you who are parents, we don't just give our, if we just keep giving our child gifts, well, they're going to kind of be spoiled brats. They have to like kind of earn them in a way. They have to be good. And then they learn, they learn, oh, when I, when I'm good and I'm doing things right, then life gets a little better. So when God has gifts beyond what we can imagine. So do not for bless the Lord, my soul, do not forget all his gifts who pardons all your sins and heals all your ills so that sins and ills are connected. And I think you know, we live in a world that is really full of sin. I mean, we're like, in Noah's day, it was bad, but we've got like really bad stuff going on. But God, he pardons all our sins. We just have to turn to him in humility and love. And he pardons all our sins and then all our ills. Who redeems your life from the pit. And yeah, we kind of live in a pit now. It's not good. There's so much division, so much hate. So who, but he, God redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with mercy and compassion. God's mercy and his compassion just this we have God that is, loves us so much and he crowns us. So he makes us royalty with his mercy and compassion. We have to be one with him. He's God is like, he's waiting there. He's like yearns for us. God loves all his creation. He loves everything he's created. God loves life. And when we celebrate in that love of life with him, we celebrate in love with all of his creation. I mean, it's like he wants to give us so much. We, we have to meet him, you know, with the prodigal son. We got to go home. And then everything, you know, the party commences. You know, there's the great banquet. And so, uh, who fills your days with good things, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. So psalm 103, 2 through 3. I just think that's a beautiful psalm for our, our day. But, you know, the spiritual battle, the spiritual battle is, is it's heating up. Uh, it's like, so what are we going to do? I mean, there's a lot of evil and a lot of division in the world, especially in our politics. And we see that. So I pray for our president. I pray for our leaders that they will like be servants of God. They will like serve him and, and, and choose life. So I, uh, and, and so I want to share with you, remember um, Jonah and the whale? So God approached Jonah. I said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Uh, and tell them that they 40 days to get their act together or bad things are going to happen. Well, Jonah kind of didn't want to go. He was reluctant. So, you know, Nivena was this way uh, and Jonah went this way. So then he encounters the whale and God's like, hey, you, <laughs> Nivena, over here. You have to go over here. So when, uh, jo when Jonah did arrive in Nineveh, the king there proclaimed a three-day fast and he put himself in ashes and sackcloth when he heard that the, his kingdom was going to be attacked and destroyed. It was by a neighboring force. And then what happened? He proclaimed this fast. He said, all humans and all animals, three-day fast and return to prayer. Nineveh was saved. So 
And then we have, you know, so what would happen if our political leaders like proclaimed a fast and a prayer for, and, and, and we did that, and we actually like did that. Well, there's the, a governor, um, John Edwards in uh, uh, Louisiana in July 17th, July 17th, 2020, he did, he proclaimed a fast. Now this governor, he's a, just a wonderful, I don't know him personally, this is Louisiana and I'm in Indiana, but he's a Catholic pro-life governor and he proclaimed this fast. And I think if we can come together, and we, where can we where can we be? And we come together in prayer, and you know, can we be? You know, we receive the bless, the blessings that God has. Well, well, yeah, He pardons all our sins, He heals all our ills. He's just right there, ready to go. Uh, we just had to participate. We just had to participate in Him. Now, Julie Norwich, she's um, one of my favorite 14th century uh, mystics, church mystics, and and she had these visions from God. And one of them, Jesus, well, from Jesus, Jesus shared with her. He told her that sin is behoovable. I mean, sin is necessary. So why is sin necessary? His if we think. Think about it for a moment we uh, when things are easy and good we don't turn we don't always turn to God it's it's a blessing when we do and we are like so blessed if life is good we recognize that and we continually support uh, do our part to support that relationship with God however a lot of times we have to be brought down to our knees and, and sin can do that and then we can turn around through sin and then turn to God and with compassion contrition and compassion like a true yearning for God and then you know, will we choose love and humility will we choose life and we, what we have to do you know this it's a physical emotional and spiritual attack that we are dealing with so we have to address it physically emotionally and spiritually so we you know choose God choose I choose life all that he has created God loves everything he's created and when we you know when we become his friend and we love life and we love his creation and then like everything like the pain and the suffering it, it's gonna go away and uh, so you know that's I guess that's the end of my talk on how I beat COVID-19. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any comments and, and thoughts, please leave those in the comment section below. That'd be really helpful. Sometimes we can have a lot of great conversation down there. And uh, be well. And uh, God bless you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.